All right, in our chapter on conics, we're going to start off just understanding what our general shapes and our equations would look like. And then as we progress through these notes today, we're going to learn how to transform equations into these, um, into these particular forms. So before we get too much farther, I want to walk through kind of some key notes of some characteristics of the equations, what these graphs look like, and um, things to be looking for as you're trying to transform them. So for starters, what we want to notice about our equations for our conics is that these are not functions. And as we talked about in class, remember these particular shapes are formed by cross sections with a cone and a plane. So we'll have two cones as we saw in class that are oriented so that they're tip to tip, um, the vertex of that of those cones and then we slice those with a plane and it creates our various conic sections but these are not functions other than our original parabola so our up down parabola we can see we're going to keep working with that one but notice that the form of the equation is completely different than what we've seen before so the key characteristic that I want you to note right now is that we have an x squared term and then we have this coefficient on the other side that's been factored out of all of those terms. Now that's a really important characteristic that whatever term has been squared has to be on the opposite side as the coefficient. So moving down we're now going to start to investigate left right parabolas but again that original characteristic I was telling you about where we have a term that's been squared and we have a coefficient that's factored out of the remaining terms on the other side. Those have to be on different sides of the equation. So you might want to pause the video or take some time to jot these little notes down because these are going to be key things to be thinking about as we move through these conic sections. Now if I slide this we can take a look at a circle that of course we've studied circles before so our circle equation some things that we want to think about is that there's an implied plus sign in front of this first term. This is the same standard form of a circle that we've been working with since we were in geometry. So nothing really new here. But do notice that these are both plus signs. They're the same sign in other words. Um, we have two terms that are now squared. Both x and y are squared. And a circle always equals our radius squared. Now, this is a note that might not make a lot of sense right now, but if we divide everything through by this 49, we would get a 1 on the right-hand side of this equation, and both of these terms would have a 49 in the denominator. That's a key detail that we would have the same denominators for that circle, and because of that, we instead don't write it divided through by the 49, we just leave the 49 on the right hand side. The reason that's significant is we, if we come up here and we look at our ellipse, what we notice on an ellipse is that these denominators are different. If these denominators were the same, this actually would graph a circle. So what we're gonna find with an ellipse is that these denominators are gonna tell us some information about our horizontal distance, how wide the ellipse is, and a vertical distance, how tall it is. Ellipse, an ellipse is essentially just a squashed circle. And sometimes it's been squashed or stretched, we could think of it on the horizontal, but sometimes we will see some that are going to be stretched vertically. So that's not really significant. What's significant to us is that both of these terms are positive, again, there's an implied plus sign right here. So both of our terms are positive, or in other words, they have the same sign. But our denominators are different. So that's what our key difference there is going to be. When we get to a hyperbola, the one thing that we really need to look for is that we have uh, one positive, the implied plus sign is right here, and we have one negative. So as soon as you see that your squared terms have different signs, you know that you have a hyperbola. It doesn't matter whether they're the same or the different, same or different denominators. These signs are different. That automatically makes it a hyperbola. Remember, a hyperbola is not just two parabolas. 
our parabolas will continue getting wider and wider and wider and wider forever and ever, even if that that change isn't very perceptible to our human eye, it does continue getting wider forever. Versus our hyperbolas are going to reach this max because they're going to be bounded by these asymptotes and our parabolas don't have any type of a boundary like that. So do keep that in mind that they are not really um, the exact same things. Okay, so that's all we want to really look at on this page is just what these equations look like because as we do our own transformations, this is these are our, our end goals. The other thing is we as we progress through this chapter, you could come back to this page because each of the equations that I've provided here are in fact the equations for the graphs that I've shown. So you can come back and kind of look at those as we progress through and see how these equations and these graphs make sense and go together.